Okay, sorry, I got cut off there for a second. But uh, I was talking about the blind side, and I was saying that it is extremely formulaic, and it just throws every stereotype at, in the book at you, and they're just there's no originality at all, and there's just nothing really that I can recommend, except maybe Sandra Bullock. I think she was very good, and um, I mean I think Sandra Bullock is an excellent actress, but her the problem is is the movies that she's in are really I mean she, they're not worthy of her talents as an actress, and I wish that she were in more serious roles because I think she's excellent in them, but. In The Blind Side, I mean, that being said, I think she's excellent, but, I mean, this is not an Academy Award-worthy performance, at least to me. Um, I think there are a lot of other actresses that could have fit that, um, could have been in her spot, but, you know, that's the Academy Awards, you know, they're very much, as I said, about being into, you know, who's in and, you know, all of that, and I think that, you know, Sandra Bullock, this is her year, she's like the big entertainer, so I think they're going to give it to her as kind of like a career appreciation. Um, so yes, I think she's going to win. My hope, though, is that Carrie Mulligan gets the Oscar, and I hope this mainly because I thought just thought she was so great. I mean, she had this kind of youthful exuberance, she had real spunk and personality in her work, and I think that performance was really a star-making performance, and I think it didn't really get the audience it deserved. And um, But, you know, I'm glad she got nominated, because hopefully she'll get more roles, but I think she's wonderful, and I think she may, you know, she probably, we'll probably see her again at the Oscars. But anyway, so yeah, she's my hope for the Oscar, but I think Sandra Bullock will get it, or Meryl Streep, so either one of those. Okay, now I'm going to go on to Best Supporting Actor, and the nominees are Matt Damon for Invictus, uh, Woody Harrelson for The Messenger, Christopher Plummer for The Last Station, and Stanley Tucci for The Lovely Bones, and Christoph Waltz for Inglorious Bastards. Um, I think this one's pretty much in the bag as well. I think it's going to be Christoph Waltz. I mean, when you look at the rest of the nominees and you look at him, I think he's in a category on his own. Really, I think that everything he does in this movie is pitch perfect. I love the fact that he, it looks like he's almost enjoying himself playing this villain. He's one of those characters who enjoys the process instead of the payoff, which is also very Tarantino. And I think that this is Tarantino, or maybe one of Tarantino's more interesting characters, and he's had a lot of them. Uh, but Christoph Waltz, I love the fact that he's so calm and composed, yet in a second he can just turn into a monster. And, you know, he pulls every string of suspense with such precision and he's just incredibly wicked and I just really loved him in that performance so I think that he will get it and I hope he will so yes okay now I'm going to go on to best actor here we have Jeff Bridges for Crazy Heart George Clooney for Up in the Air Colin Firth for A Single Man Morgan Freeman for Invictus and Jeremy Renner for The Hurt Locker um, I'm pretty sure that Jeff Bridges will get the Oscar for Crazy Heart and I think he's definitely deserving uh, mainly because he's had such a wonderful career. But, I mean, I think that he was wonderful in the part, and if you saw my re review, I thought that he was basically the only thing that held the movie together. I thought he was wonderful, and the movie was, or the the part was completely tailor-made for him, I think. And so I'll be happy if he wins the Oscar, but personally, my choice would have to be Jeremy Renner for The Hurt Locker. And I am one of those people who adored The Hurt Locker and loved every aspect, including his performance. Uh, Jeremy Renner's character, I think, is definitely the most interesting, uh, most complex, definitely an enigma of a character. He's kind of this very rugged soldier who's kind of all, he's like an adrenaline junkie, he enjoys war, but yet also what is so apparent in the role is kind of the cerebral aspects of the war, the costs of war and what it does to the mind. And Jeremy Renner just brings all of this to the screen in a way that, he, I mean, to me when I was watching it, he is so magnetic and you just cannot take your eyes off him as a character. And so I think that he is one of those, I mean, one of those underrated characters. And I think Jeremy Renner just, I mean, no one could have played that part except him. And, you know, honestly, I hope that it would be kind of like, I guess it was like in 2003, don't quote me, but sometime, remember when, uh, no one thought that Adrian Brody would win the Oscar for Best Actor, and he did. And so I, I would think it would be really cool, you know, to see something like that happen, but I don't think it will. I'm pretty sure that Jeff Bridges will get it, but I hope Jeremy Renner does. Okay, 
Um, now I'm going to do Best Director, and the nominees are Catherine Bigelow for The Hurt Locker, James Cameron for Avatar, Lee Daniels for Precious, Jason Reitman for Up in the Air, and Quentin Tarantino for Inglorious Bastards. Um, they are making a big to-do in the media about James Cameron and Catherine Bigelow because they are exes, and everyone's making a big deal about that, you know, like, you know, husband and wife, you know, against each other, but... You know, honestly, I think that's just a bunch of build-up. I think they both have a deep amount of respect for each other. Um, you know, I think James Cameron has done something that is incredible with Avatar. But honestly, Catherine Bigelow would definitely have to be my choice. I think she, what she did with The Hurt Locker was so beyond anything else this year. For me, she's kind of like a modern-day Hitchcock, or at least she's got kind of a Hitchcockian quality to her work. And, you know, you look at The Hurt Locker, and I always describe it as, you know, viewing The Hurt Locker is almost like getting an injection of adrenaline right into your heart. I mean, it's so intense and so hands-on, it seems, so immersive. And she just brought every aspect of that, you know, to us as an audience. And, you know, the camera, you look at the camera in this movie, and it seems like it's very, it's like a frenzy, but it's never chaotic it everything has motivation every shot is planned out and everything has a rhythm and I really appreciate that about um, her work so I hope that she will get it I honestly don't know I think it could be, be either her or James Cameron uh, but I'm rooting for her so uh, I'm going to do my best picture um, hopes and predictions on a separate video so I'll see you guys in a second 